And this is looking at the investable universe uh, for all the major markets, which a lot of our clients invest in. Tokyo, you can see, is way out there in terms of both uh, the, so this is looking at investment volume, liquidity, versus the amount of products available in the market. So what this says to us is it is a, a very good market, it's very liquid, um, and there are a lot of opportunities. Um, looking at transaction volume. So the good news is the component here, Japan, the light blue, that we saw a really big bounce back from third quarter to fourth quarter. It was over 100% up. And that just goes to show over the last few quarters, we're hearing foreign investors saying they want to get into Japan because of the favorable, uh, the favorable both cost of debt as well as the favorable um, currency uh, situation with the weak yen. If you look here, 40% of respondents told us last year uh, in 2022 that they're going to plan to increase their assets under management by more than 10 <clears throat> percent and then this year 41 percent said that they're going to increase more than 10 percent so it just goes to show that has there's a lot of conviction in that market compared to some of the other markets where we're seeing more um, lesser interest but nobody <clears throat> is close to where japan is in terms of investor interest then let's make uh, some predictions for what's what are going to happen in this year for the Japan market. Uh, first of all, revitalizing investment volume. Uh, we believe that the investment volume for this year might be increasing, largely because that uh, existing property owners are going to dispose their properties to avoid increasing of the finance, refinancing costs. And the final topic is um, the robust demands for the living sector. Uh, not only for the multifamily, other living sector asset classes are getting attracting by investor attentions. Uh, senior care housing has already been in a very popular asset class. As you might know, um, the Japan is already in an ultra-aged society. Therefore, the demands are, are to be really strong. Mm -hmm. Student housing and co-living uh, are still in the beginning of stage. Uh, but some domestic investors are trying to establish the sector by substantial investments. This living sector, along with the multifamily, uh, might be uh, one of the most desirable investment destinations uh, for this year. Uh, let me briefly touch on the why Tokyo multifamily. Um, average 72% of all multifamily deals in the past decade were seen in the Tokyo metro area, which suggests that investment first choice is still Tokyo. Uh, positive net migration, stable rent, uh, stable rental and the vacancy rate, and limited new supply. Uh, Tokyo can expect a positive population inflows once again uh, for this year, uh, for for uh, the year to 2022, as some of the people want to go back to the city center. This should be reasonable evidence that Tokyo multifamily can enjoy high occupancy with strong demands. Vacancy rate uh, saw negative growth in the COVID pandemic period, but most recently, all Tokyo metro areas has been gradually restoring. This supports that the Tokyo's population inflows are seen uh, in in this in the last year. And a final topic is a limited new supply. Uh, every year, uh, Tokyo Prefecture sees about uh, 60,000 units of multifamily leasing schemes as a new supply. However, uh, especially Tokyo central area, center three worlds, you can see really marginal new supply has been seen in the past 10 years. The, the white line is the IRS, uh, which is which is the interest rate swap, which is freely traded in market. Then you have the blue line, which is the JGB yield, the implied yield. And I've marked uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.25, and 0.5% uh, threshold, which the POJ controls, right? So POJ controls where those rates are, and, and basically today they, they remain steady at 0.5%. So you see the swap spread, which was at some stage more than 50 basis points, compressed back to, to right now it would be maybe even a little bit lower, but it came halfway back, so it's now 25 basis points. This is not what the market expected, so people people actually wanted the POJ to abandon their yield curve control, so basically get rid of the 0.5% target here and just let it just let it go, which most likely would have led to the blue line catching up with the white line. But 
BOJ Kuroda Zan said no, and the white line had to catch up with the blue line. So this uh, would have cost a lot of macro funds a lot of money today. One thing I want to touch quickly, and at the end I'll tell you why as well. So the average, so obviously like in Japan, what people always mention is like the, the sustainability of the debt, right? So we're, we're to, like higher than two, uh, 220% of GDP in terms of outstanding debt. Is that sustainable? Uh, for now, yes, because if you look at the average, average uh, uh, government bond maturity in Japan is around nine years. If you compare that with, say, Italy, is around seven years, and the United States of America is like six years. So we should actually be more worried what's happening there than, uh, than in the immediate future with Japan. If you've seen what's happened over the last three years, the low inflationary factors uh, across the Western markets compared to Japan, you see that, again, this is November 2022. So earlier on, you, you probably remember uh, inflationary factors of 20% plus in, in some of the markets. That 3.8 still holds true today. Japan inflation is roughly that sort of number. Uh, and of course, things are starting to uh, precipitate down a little bit because a lot of those drivers are uh, commodity drivers that are pushing that up. But it's highly uh, helpful and many of the drivers why people are coming into Japan multifamily housing uh, in terms of its inflation. When we invest in Japan uh, multifamily housing, we like it because it's a predictable asset class and it's stable. Uh, and it says that it's outperforming. So when, when we say outperforming within the data that's there, we're saying that on a risk adjusted return basis, uh, it's positive to invest in Japan multifamily housing. Our own journey of investing in uh, Japan, we invested uh, about 12 months ago uh, in, in Japan uh, during COVID, uh, inability to travel. Uh, we took the view that, you know, solid, robust uh, Osaka Nagoya assets that 90% occupied will be uh, will be a good investment. In the nine months or so that uh, Japan has opened up with the business travel, etc., we're already seeing an uplift in our valuation. Uh, COVID and the pandemic impact made a lot of people move away from the city center, uh, work from home and the office. Uh, that trend is, is pushing everybody back to, I want to be somewhere uh, that's close to my workplace where employment is.